Today we're going to be taking a closer look at the inside of the PSVR 2. Hey everybody, welcome back. I was reviewing our channel videos and realized that we've never actually done a PSVR 2 teardown on the channel. A long, long time ago, somebody sent one in to us for us to actually disassemble so that they could have the outer faceplate painted and customized. And that was the last time we actually did a teardown on one, and that's been almost, you know, two years ago now. So I thought, well, I've got this PSVR 2 laying around and needs to be disassembled, so we would just take a look at it together and see what's going on inside. This is just one of our teardown units that we've got here in the shop, and we'll use it for parts to repair other headsets. And if you've not removed the head strap off of your PSVR 2, they're actually incredibly light. These things, like, if, if I couldn't see myself holding it, I would almost barely realize that it was there. If you've not taken the head strap off your PSVR 2 before, you actually can do that just by pressing this little button here, and then there's another a little metal tab on the head strap itself that you can lift up with your finger and then just pull the whole thing out. And that allows you to remove the cables as well. My number one complaint with the PSVR 2 just as a product is that it uses a proprietary cable that they do not sell and you cannot buy anywhere. I think probably the most common inquiry that we get about PSVR 2s is about cable repair or replacing the cables on the units after they get damaged, torn up, or go bad. A lot of people think that it's just a standard USB-C cable because, you know, it's USB-C on the end that goes into the PlayStation or into the adapter that you would plug into your PC, but that's actually not the case. On this end, there's a proprietary jack that is not USB-C, and it has also got the audio jack that is, that is wired into it. But like I said, I want to take a peek inside here and disassemble this unit entirely so we're gonna get going on that and I'm gonna show you how it's done this rubber face shield actually comes off fairly easy it just has these little hooks here and we can just unhook those all along the outside they're just little t-shaped hooks that come off and just be careful that you don't tear this up while you're doing it because once they're torn obviously it's gonna be really hard to fix all right now that's off and you could actually access these screws before, but it's just a little bit easier now. This is my favorite screwdriver set, and you can just use a T5 bit to take these screws out one at a time. And we only have five screws as we work our way around here. Now that we've taken those screws off, we can remove this piece which holds in that face shield. And the whole thing just pops out just like that. This, this is the step where it gets a little counterintuitive here because most of the time at this juncture you'd think, well, I've taken out some screws here so maybe I can just take the faceplate off. But actually what we've done is we've loosened this whole outer bezel component that serves multiple purposes. So what we're gonna do here is we're actually just gonna pry this up. And you can use a pry tool or something, but this is actually coming up pretty easy. And we're just gonna undo these clips all the way around. These clips on the bottom are a little stiffer than the ones on the top, so it's something to look out for so you don't break those. There we go, and we're free. And then we have four screws on the bottom here and four screws on the top. These all appear to be Phillips bit screwdrivers, so we're gonna try out my trusty Phillips double zero bit, and that's working. All right, and now all of those screws are undone. So we can just start unclipping 
around the outside here. And there it is. It's always funny to see the insides of different headsets and like compare this fan with the Quest 3 fan or this board with the Quest 3 board, for instance, or even the Quest 2 board and the Quest 2 fan. Definitely some different concepts and design takes at play. I think maybe it's just because I'm used to working on headsets with internal batteries, but this just feels so light to me. Like this just feels like I'm barely holding anything. I think it's kind of funny that Sony put the Sony Interactive Entertainment on the inside of the headset where nobody's ever going to see it. Why, why go through the extra effort of doing that? And that seems like it comes out super easy. No problem there. Let me go ahead and take this head strap mounting bracket off. All these screws look very similar so far. So far I've only come across three different types of screws in the whole headset. You kind of got these long silver screws and then a, a shorter black Phillips screw and then the T5 screws that kind of held in the, the little face gasket light shield thing. We got one little screw that holds this in. And that is a massive heat sink. This is the Quest 2 heat sink for reference. Hmm. Kind of seems like these camera assemblies are in the way of me taking out the board, so I'm gonna go for those next. Same silver screw, no variation there. Just a lot of these types of screws. And there's one of those tracking cameras. We got two screws that hold in this bracket here. And these screws do look a little different, but they're still a Phillips screw. Kind of an interesting plastic washer that sits in there and holds that in place. I'm going to go ahead and remove these ribbon cables. One and two, and they just pop out. Take this cable out as well. Go ahead and take this little board out here. Go ahead and get it out of the way. And this, oh, this just slides up. Interesting. That is just, was just really firmly secured on there. So it's got these little rubber rings that go around the inside, little silicone rings. And that just kind of held that in place. So whole assembly just comes off. And now, oh, that just clips out. Great. Take these ribbons all the way out. These are our LCD ribbons here. And then finally, we can take the board out. One cable up here, still plugged in, and then one cable there, still plugged in. All right, and then out we come. Cool. Looks like I've got one screw down here and one screw up there holding this assembly together. This whole thing just pops out. Oh, one more screw up top. And then... Well, that's our, our audio jack just comes out just like that. 
This is uh, reminiscent of the valve index for me. It's got a very similar sort of mechanism that allows the IPD to adjust on this spring and rod system. But unlike the valve index, I think we can just take this one screw out and have the whole system disassemble. We're gonna find out. These little hooks down here, those are holding us in place. So we'll just lift that up. And then out it comes. And we'll just lift this one up. And out it comes. And then we have, looks like our proximity sensor is screwed into the assembly here, this housing. Cool. And I think that's it. That's the full PSVR2 teardown. Doesn't look like much without its shell, but that's it. Got our LCDs and our board, our cameras, microphone, proximity sensor, and a bunch of ribbon cables. If you guys have any questions, comments, or thoughts, please uh, leave me a comment. We won't do the reassembly today, because like I said, I, I need this for, for other parts, and we're going to try and start flushing out some PSVR2 parts on our website. Um, but if you guys have any questions or comments or any feedback on this teardown process, just uh, leave me a comment. I appreciate you guys watching the video today, and make sure that you uh, give us a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Thanks again for watching, and we will see you on the next one.